there. It's Catherine. Hani, Tanzi, Bujo. I'm here from Moonstar Lodge to give you the weekly reading for the uh, 24th, I believe it is, till the 30th of January. And wow, this month has gone so quickly. If you're new to this channel, I do a weekly reading and we pop in some tutorial kind of reflective readings on everything from books to pairing oracles and tarot and combining things and technique. Um, we've been around here in central Ontario now for the better part of um, 40 years plus with this lodge and we have been providing indigenous teachings are in arts uh, education and spirituality. We have a studio and if you like this reading please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe that really helps with the uh, logistics of this channel. We have a lot of puppy nonsense in these uh, videos so that's the background noise you're hearing. Anyway um, this is a complex reading. I decided to go back to our medicine wheel format and I'm utilizing a new deck that I received. Um, it's an indigenous deck and it's called the Gentle Tarot. It's from an Alaskan native woman named Mari and she really has incorporated some beautiful uh, elements in her very gentle tarot and I, I need gentle today. I'm not feeling the best. I'm utilizing the Elemental Oracle by Stacy DeMarco. This is the, the cover of the gentle tarot by the way. I'm utilizing um, something that I've not done I don't believe in these videos in two years but the Orbs cards by Diana Cooper, the uh, Medicine cards and the Judith Pintar um, cards that I often use, they're involved. So let's go to the reading, Brian. All right, so here's our medicine wheel. I'm utilizing the cloth that uh, came with the Gentle Tarot deck. Sorry, I have this the wrong way. There we go, the Gentle Tarot deck. And she has a medicine wheel format. So here's our East our south, our west, and our north. The clarifying cards I didn't show you are by Denise Lynn, who is a Cherokee elder and Hay House author, and these are the Sacred Destiny cards. So these are what um, clarifies our uh, cards here today. Here's the Judith Pintar cards, the um, Winds and Changes, there's the orbs cards for some spirit knowledge and here are the uh, medicine animal cards. So starting in the east uh, we have this wee fox here in protection. This is the um, seed of thunder. So in the gentle tarot instead of page, knight, queen, king she has seed, root, flower, and harvest which is a beautiful way to um, get the colonial influence out of the, the deck. Anyway, we have a little fox here and uh, this seed of thunder is asking, are you feeling kind of out of sorts, uh, misdirected, not thinking clearly, um, not feeling like you're quite going in the direction that you need to be? The lack of clarity, this, this is the same as the element of air or mind. So uh, the same as the swords in a regular deck. Now that's an interesting um, way to start the, the week feeling. I'm often that way on Monday so I can certainly uh, commiserate. It's clarified by the transformation card. So we're given a clue here that something um, from within a lot of this pandemic time has been spent feeling pummeled by 
the news and by the government and lockdowns and all of these have-tos and, and things which have changed the nature of life. But transformation is coming. So let's just take it to the inward. The, the caterpillar transforms from within and explodes into the beautiful butterfly. So please know that Spirit is saying, if you're feeling discombobulated, and of course this is a general reading, you may or may not resonate with this, but know that this is the information that Spirit is providing for the collective. So there's a lot of us feeling a little out of, out of uh, sorts and not quite on the path as if we don't know what the path is. It's as if we've lost our way here. So I'm going to turn this around just for the, the sake of your viewing opportunity here. When we come, as the week progresses, we have got the harvest of thunder. So the harvest is like the king. So we go from what would be the page position to the king position. So here we have it all. We've got our um, intellectual poop together. We've got clarity. We have good things happening. So please know that the transformation that's foretold here is actually we do get it all together. And two cards came out when I asked for clarifiers. One of them is freedom and the other one is miracles. So this is a week to look up. In fact, what I think I will do is um, push this card to the side and push this card to this side so that you can see both of them. So freedom and miracles, um, you know, I could go to Denise's book and expound on this, but let's just leave that for the moment. As we move around to the west position, we've got the nine of wands. And this Nine of Wands is uh, asking us to just step aside a little bit from feeling that we are protecting. You're so near the end of whatever this particular um, creation is. The Nine is the end of a cycle. And um, could you just stop this for a second? Sorry, through the magic of uh, video here with the captain of the starship, we had to stop for some puppy nonsense. That's kind of how I feel about this card. When we're nearing the end of some kind of endeavor that's been creative, we're feeling, this card is saying, you know, there's a withdrawal here, a sense of being protective about whatever we've created. And when we get into the defensive no mode and the um, us and them kind of thing, we're, we're starting to separate. This is not a good place to be. In fact, if you looked at this card carefully, if you could see it as clearly as, as I see it, there's a lynx here watching and guarding. We don't need to feel guarded. We don't need to feel guarded when we're in this place of clarity. This is a slight shift with the pendulum too far in the other direction. This card of clarifying as community reminds us that, that we still need to see ourselves as part of the whole. We are not separate from the whole. So here's the pendulum going from one extreme, finding clarity, starting to go to the other extreme, um, too protective of what we're working on. And the North card is the Empress in reverse or protection. And I'm going to turn the Empress around here. So this is about nourishment. This is about the Gaia principle and our connection to Earth. Feeling unnourished, feeling not cared for. Um, and this, this is a self-care card. This is a what is it that we need and the clarifier card is release in this case. Um, whatever shoulds that you're having about yourself and your time, or whatever you're denying yourself to give to others, and I mean that in terms of energy as much as anything, by all means know that you, know, you are the center of the hub of your wheel. Get back out in nature by the weekend. Do what you have to do to take some time to be alone, 
to mother yourself. So that's a very important, um, you know, release is about letting go of that which doesn't serve you and anything that stops you from feeling whole and which makes you feel unwell or burdened or exhausted, it's got to go. So let's go to um, the, the ancestors in the middle here. The first card from the Judith Pintar is West and the Gaia. Well, this is exactly the principle we're talking about here, the Gaia principle. This is about the evolving and, um, you know, what manifests on in our minds and in this earth plane um, is reflected back to us from source. So this is the all that is, what you think you manifest. Um, this is an incar incarnation card. So this is a tree of life manifesting the roots and the solidity into a new form. And this is an emergent form. This is earth. And as you can see, there's a person reflected. We come from the earth. We are part of the earth. And um, there is no separation. So all of these cards here in this whole line talk about... Um, the need for us to know that we cannot not be responsible for our thoughts and what we create. This is a series of uh, cards on creation. All right. Our dotums for the week include crow, and Crow asks us to focus on the positive, to detach from negativity, and to see opportunity in every challenge. And that's reflecting in this card. Crow is also the call to the shaman. Horse. Wow. Honor your medicine. Stand tall. Use your talents. Own who you are becoming. Because you have to remember in this time of uh, this first moon cycle talks with relations, we are moving into the next moon cycle of Wisdom Keeper um, next week, in fact, just after this reading is complete. We move uh, February 1st, I believe. The other dotum is Squirrel. Use time and energy properly. Waste nothing on negativity. Gather the rewards of stewardship. While stewardship reflects in our responsibility here to the earth and to ourselves, to everything we are creating. So everything we create starts in the mind, and that's this, this wee fox here who was in protection. Um, in, in other words, this way, saying, be cautious about lack of clarity, lack of focus, and lack of direction. Um, you don't want to create chaos. You want to create stable, sturdy, uh, strong and true foundations. You need to release what doesn't serve you. You need to know that this clarity that you're bringing to you um, is amazing. So these two cards here from Stacy DeMarco's Elements. What elements will help? Um, this is Hearth. Comfort. And this is time and discipline. So the discipline is reflected here with squirrel as well. And so you're being asked to use your time wisely. That's very important. What do the spirits, the spirit dimension says to us? Um, Archangel Felii, the, animal of, uh, the angel of animals, is in this orb. An, an angel uh, with an angel of love. Uh, we always need to respect the animals and our connection to earth. If we it's staged, you know, if we start disrespecting animals, it goes down the chain. We need to reconnect with our animals and uh, not take them for granted. According to um, biologists, we're in the sixth and final big extinction. So let's look after the uh, crawlers, the swimmers, the flyers, and the creepers. So by reconnecting with our animal dotums here, and all of these are dotums, not just crow, horse, and squirrel, 
we've got Fox, we've got Lynx, we've got uh, Dove, and um, Moose. Now, this is an orb of Archangels Uriel, Raphael, and Zadkiel. And I'm just curious what the reference is in this particular card. Um, these cards were photographed as orbs being created during ceremony to um, call in these beings. And it says, this orb's main purpose is to promote reconciliation and send out international peace. It can heal your solar plexus of any shock and trauma you have experienced by enfolding you in love. It lifts depression and dissolves fear of death, enabling people to see and to pass over well. Your guidance is to explore your fears and transmute them. Ask the angels in this orb to help you reconcile your relationships and work with the angels to send peace to the world. A very wonderful message from the beyond. Orbs are a very powerful and potent um, thing in parapsychology. Yes, occasionally orbs can be dust on the lens or, um, you know, spiders or insects or, or whatever. But a lot of the time they are very definitely spirit messengers. And there's some good resources out there. Uh, technical scientific resources to support you if you ever want to study orbs. Okay, you can flip the camera. So, dog and husband and cats and silly nonsense aside, we've got a really good message for this coming week. It's really easy in these uh, late winter well, we're coming up to the middle winter point, which is, you know, February 1st, 2nd. But it's it's really easy to get depressed and in the doldrums. So this is very much uh, a reading about hang in there and clear up your thinking. Gratitude goes a long way. All right. Miigwech. Nyawen. Have a wonderful week.